even today when it's produced, and that, that can be important. In other words, the problem is that local pottery has not the interest of collectors, and people don't collect this stuff. Uh, it only costs 50 cents Singaporean to buy a pot. We have the best collection of earthenware, Southeast Asian earthenware in the world, in a particular house in Washington, D.C. Okay? 50 cents a pot, $200 a pot to get it there. Okay, but, you know, that's part of the issue. So, so there's some, what's, what's in these pots? The question is, how do we build a corpus of understanding about the ceramics, which we really don't want to know much about? So we emphasize, does that show up better there than here? Okay. We emphasize that our project is focused not on this poorly understood past, and the problem is we really don't have an archaeology of this, but on the present. Well, what we can see with our own eyes and document through watching pots make pots and in conversations with them, uh, recording their practices with video and still photography. Certainly, we encounter tension between this effort at a flat, ahistorical survey of what is there now and the questions that inevitably arise of how things were done in the past. Occasionally, when evidence warrants, we edge cautiously backward from the present into the depths of history but that is not our main purpose. At the end of this, though, I will be giving some historical hints about how we think this stuff ended up across the landscape. So, we have mapped and visited all the currently active or recently active village-based stoneware and earthenware ceramic production sites in mainland Southeast Asia, typed the various ways to produce both kinds of pots, and attempted to understand the variations within types and the relationships among them. That sounds pretty boring. A lot of trips, though. A lot of good work. I like to travel. We also want to understand the roles of stoneware and earthenware ceramics within cultures of the region that have continued to create demand for them. We want to understand how the potters see themselves as craftspeople and how pottery making fits in to the other dimensions of their life. And by the way, that, that itself is a, is a statement from Louise because, as you may know, her background is she, she sort of worked as a crafts historian, she called herself, of a village in, in Japan where they made big jars to put tea leaves in, uh, called Shigaraki. And, and she spent many years there and, and wrote a wonderful thick book on that. And then she went to India, did two years of field work at Puri, uh, as with the potters of Puri who make uh, jars that are used, or earthenware pots that are used for the production of, of uh, Stoneware continue to be made, 
marketed, and used. Mainland Southeast Asia is one of the few places in the world where this is so, where we can witness the complementary production of the two basic types of ceramics, low temperature and high temperature, porous and non-porous, relatively fragile and relatively durable, with their different roles in human activities. In other words, go up there and live in a village in Northeast Thailand and you'll see, or Laos better, and see this if there's no thing get rid of the plastic. Although we know that this dual production was once common in East Asia, earthenware production has largely disappeared from China, Japan, and Korea. South Asia has a deep tradition of earthenware production, but stoneware was introduced only in the colonial era in South Asia. But we also began our project with the naive assumption that all earthenware pots, or earthenware or stoneware pots, were made in similar ways. Okay? But we rapidly discovered that mainland Southeast Asia encompasses a rich variety of production technologies, particularly for earthenware. Uh, it's amazing how many different ways you, you need, how many different ways you produce what it looks like to be the same pot. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and look. We realized we had stumbled in a domain, into a domain of research which no one had been considered before, but which seemed to have significance. And since we like to travel, it gave us an excuse to travel and travel and travel again. <laughs> more villages and more different places than anybody else in Southeast Asia. Okay, we will begin by introducing earthenware and stoneware and some of the ways these two types of pots continue to be used in rural and I would suggest maybe even urban areas of mainland Southeast Asia, having gone into Little India here. And I would be interested in the use of earthenware in Little India today and where that earthenware is produced. Where does it come from? And go back to your um, your that densely populated city that was around now. What are we calling Mount Cannon or Mount Fort Canning? Okay, Mount uh, Meru. Okay, the Mount Meru of Singapore. Okay, it's not this not the Bank of China building. It's that, that. Okay, and and I would I, I bet you Dimes don't if there had to be a pottery production place here, earthenware there or somewhere nearby, so it could be brought in by boat. Okay, and I and I. I think you really should look for anything, <laughs> being a pot person. We will begin by introducing earthenware and stoneware. We want to emphasize the significance of village-based production. In most cases, making pottery is not a full-time profession uh, before the present. Okay? Farming, typically rice growing, is the major activity for most people in the region. During the downtime from farming in the dry season, and here we're talking about mainland Southeast Asia, December through May, Pottery pottery making is one skill among many, including weaving, car weaving carpentry construction that men and women in farming families engage to make extra income. So let's talk a little bit about earthenware. Earthenware, I'm going to just go give you a sort of list of descriptive ideas. And by the way, uh, I, I'm happy to give John here a copy of the presentation and the PowerPoint and all that. And so you can use it. This, type, this paper is slated for publication in the transactions of the audience. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, it, it'll be out. Okay, women produce earthenware pots. Primarily, 99% of all earthenware pots that are produced in mainland Southeast Asia, I'm not talking about Southeast Asia, South Asia, but mainland Southeast Asia are produced by women. And what does that mean? Why is that there? Hmm? Okay, the properties of earthenware, porosity, it seeps. Things seep out, the water seeps through that. What does good is good to have? What good does it do to have water seep to a pot? Well, it cools the water on the inside. If you don't happen to have electricity and a refrigerator, you just put a pot out there, earthenware pot, with the water. The water seeps out. You get nice cool water inside. Okay. It resists the thermal shock. Earthenware. You can cook with earthenware pots if you know how to heat the pot correctly on the burner or the or on the charcoal. Was better. Then you can cook with it. Clay's porosity is reinforced by adding sand or temper of some kind. Okay, and there are various kinds of tempers that are used. Firing. Porosity also relates to how earthenware can be fired. In an efficient bonfire, sometimes taking as little as 30 minutes from start to finish. Two minutes, done. And within 30 minutes, these people are taking the pots out, like you see on the door right here, and taking them and selling them, and they'll be sold in the market. That, either that day or for the next session. Okay. 
pay is just amazingly quick. The repertory of round bottom pots in various specific sizes for particular uses. Cool drinking water. Okay, These, this is just the repertory of what this woman can make. Uh, and that's not all, by the way. She, by the way, this is a much reduced repertory from what it was 40, 50 years ago, when they were making big things for stills and, and other wonderful things that you can make use of for a pot for. In a house, for instance, this is cooling drinking water. In a house, it's hospitality, hospitality for, the, for the makers. You can use it for cooking rice, as you can see here. The, top, the, 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 the uh, rice steamer is the black pot resting on the tripod. A round base supports the ease of supporting on three rocks on the hearth. That's all you need. You don't want to have any more than that. Three prongs on the stove. Uh, the pot above it is actually where the rice is cooked. It's a sticky rice. And so you steam the rice as opposed to boiling the rice as you do.